Good morning. Good morning. It is so good to see all of you here today. We also want to say hello to those people who are watching us by way of Facebook. It is good to have you joining us too. Let's start by seeing if anybody has any announcements to make today. 
Any announcements? No. Okay. What about prayer concerns and praises? What shall we be in prayer for this week? Yes, Debbie. The announcements? Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 What a good reminder that when we um, add food to the blessing box, um, it's important to make sure that the cans, if you put a can in, that it has a pop top, um, because a lot of our friends who come to the box don't have can openers. Um, so thank you for that reminder. What's that? Or, yeah, or yeah, go to the Dollar Tree and get a can opener. We have done that in the past and put several in there, and they go really fast. I bet they do. And um, uh, Robert Wooten brought some brought us some military can openers, uh-huh. and we went through those very fast. I'll bet. So that might be something y'all might consider is just can openers, mm-hmm. you know, because. Um, uh, like Debbie said, it, it is hard for people if they don't have that. Right. And, and But we are just grateful that all of you have been putting stuff in for your donations. Yes, we are. So thank you for those reminders. What about prayer concerns? Tim McCall. Tim McCall. Emily and Daniel. Emily and Daniel Tenney and the death of Daniel's father. Libby Vaughn. Vaughn. Lucy Kate. Kate. And Kim Blackwelder, yes. Debbie Blackman is progressing nicely. Okay, praise that Debbie Blackman is doing well. Sharon Wilson and her continued treatments. A praise that Brandon went back to work. So Pam's son Brandon has gone back to work. Yay! Okay, hearing no others, I invite you to stand and share signs of Christ's peace with one another. Okay, here we go, y'all. 
if you would please turn in your bulletin to our call to worship. We have a special call to worship and a special morning prayer today because this is Christ the King Sunday. We'll be talking about what that means a little bit later, but essentially we're celebrating the kingship of Jesus. So let us read this call to worship responsibly. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Blessing and honor and glory and might be unto the Lamb. Worthy is Christ who has ransomed us by his blood from every tribe and tongue and nation and made his people a kingdom and priests to our God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Amen. may be seated. If you would, please turn now in your bulletins to our morning prayer and let us read these words together. Almighty God, who gave your son, Jesus Christ, a realm where all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him, make us loyal followers of our living Lord that we may always hear his word, follow his teachings, and live in his spirit, and hasten the day when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. To your eternal glory. Amen. And now let's continue by praying the prayer Jesus taught his disciples and us also to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we will dedicate these prayer quilts. Um, one is for Larry Williams and the other is for Kim Blackwelder. So after we have prayed this prayer during the hymns for the rest of the service, you may come up and tie little knots um, in the threads of the quilts as you offer prayers for each of those people. Let us pray. As we are bound together by the threads in this quilt, we are also bound together through the love of Jesus Christ. Bless, we pray, each knot that is tied and each prayer that is lifted, individually and collectively as a congregation, for the ones who receive these quilts. As we extend our faith in prayers and love, 
Pour out your Holy Spirit of care and compassion upon them that they may feel your presence near. Where there is sickness, we pray for healing. Where there is distress, we pray for strength. Where there is sadness, we pray for comfort. Where there is pain, we pray for mercy. Hear all our prayers as we offer them in and through the power and grace of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our hymn of celebration this morning is found on page 327 in the Methodist hymnal, page 327. If you're able, please stand. And now please turn to page 881 in the backs of your hymnals for the Apostles' Creed, page 881. And let's be especially mindful today that we do believe that Jesus is the one who sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, and who will come again one day to judge the quick and the dead. People of God, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. may be seated. Our scripture reading on this Christ the King Sunday comes to us from Matthew 25, beginning with verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You who are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. 
For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into the eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our hymn of preparation is found in the United Methodist Hymnal on page 715, page 715. You may remain seated as we sing. Christ the King Sunday is the day that we celebrate the risen Christ, the one who ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. During the rest of the year, we tend to focus on Jesus' earthly life and his ministry, on his teaching, his healing, the miracles he performed, and the compassion that he had on all people. On Christ the King Sunday, however, we focus on the power and splendor of the risen Christ. This is what we call Christ Pantocrator. Christ Pantocrator. This is when you see pictures um, drawn or icons that um, some churches have, especially in the domes of their buildings. 
This is where Jesus is sitting on the throne looking very stern, generally, and has his hand in this symbol frequently and is looking down in judgment of all creation. Pantocrator is a word that means almighty or all-powerful. Panto means all, and krator means powerful or mighty. I'd like for you to say pantocrator with me. Ready? Pantocrator. Again, pantocrator. All right. So let's talk a little bit about kingship in general through the history of the people of Israel. Israel was freed from slavery, and we know that they wandered 40 years in the wilderness to transform them from an enslaved people into a people who could be governed by God alone, who would live under the law and who would live under God's reign. This was to be a theocracy. God, God's self, was supposed to be king over the people. Well, this worked for a while after the people got into the promised land, which is when we entered the period of the judges. When there was a military need, God would raise up a military leader to help Israel defeat her enemies. These judges were not kings and weren't necessarily the greatest examples of faithfulness to God. And once the military crisis passed, the people were ruled by God alone again. But they had a tendency to do what was evil in the sight of the Lord. So the enemies would come again and again. By the end of the book of Judges, the people had fallen into total chaos by following their own desires instead of the law that God had given to them. By the time God raised up Samuel, as a priest, a prophet, and a judge, the people who were supposed to be governed by God alone were clamoring for a king. They wanted to be like the nations all around them who had kings, and they thought that a king would protect them from the routine invasions they would experience by their neighbors. Well, Samuel reminded the people that they were supposed to be a theocracy, that they were supposed to be governed by God alone, and not a human king. And he also told them about the downside of having a king, that citizens would be pressed into military service, that they would be taxed heavily, and that the king, if not devoted to God alone, could lead them to be unfaithful to God. But the people persisted, so Samuel finally anointed Saul as king. Then, by the time David's son Solomon came to the throne, Everything that God had warned them about had come to pass. Solomon taxed the people so that he could have extraordinary wealth. We're told that he had over 700 wives and 300 concubines, many of whom were from foreign nations and worshipped foreign gods. The people began to follow these other gods. By the end of Solomon's reign, the kingdom of Israel was split into two countries, Israel in the north and Judah in the south. Each of these countries continued to be ruled by kings. And although the kings were repeatedly warned by the prophets about the problems of worshiping foreign gods and about failing to provide justice for all people, the kings persisted in doing what was wrong. And after these warnings failed to cause the kings to be faithful to God and fair to all the people, God punished Israel by sending them into exile away from their native land. I'd like for you to listen to how the prophet Ezekiel delivered God's judgment against the kings, which in this um, particular portion of scripture are called shepherds. So... We hear God's judgment against the shepherds of Israel, which means the kings. Thus says the Lord God, Woe to you, shepherds of Israel, who have been feeding yourselves. Should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, clothe yourselves with the wool. You slaughter the fatted calves, but you do not feed the sheep. You have not strengthened the weak. You have not healed the sick. You have not bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays. 
you have not sought the lost, lost, but with force and harshness you have ruled them. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd, and scattered they became food for all the wild animals. So therefore, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, says the Lord God, because my sheep have become a prey and my sheep have become food for all the wild animals since there was no shepherd, and because my shepherds have not searched for my sheep, but the shepherds had fed themselves and have not fed my sheep. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, I am against the shepherds, and I will hold them accountable for my sheep and put a stop to their feeding the sheep. No longer shall the shepherds feed themselves. I will rescue my sheep from their mouths so that they not, may not be food for prey. And then God says this about the coming of the true king of Israel. This is all the way back in Ezekiel's time. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will sort them out. As shepherds sort out their flocks when they are scattered among the sheep, so I will sort out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and bring them into their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel and by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I myself will be shepherd of the sheep and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost and I will bring back the strays and I will bind up the injured and I will strengthen the weak but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall be them, he shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I the Lord will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I the Lord have spoken. So God had very harsh words for the kings of Israel that persisted in leading the people into the worship of foreign gods and idols. And God then promises that one day God, God's self, would come to be the king over the people. God says in the passage that we just heard from Ezekiel, that God would place someone from David's lineage on the throne and that that person would be the ultimate king. And this, of course, is Jesus, Christ Pantocrator. In the passage we heard from Ezekiel, we heard how one of the duties of this Davidic king would be to judge the people, to judge between the sheep and the goats, which brings us to today's passage. In our reading today, we see Jesus as Christ Pantocrator, seated on the throne and judging among the people. Some are judged to be sheep and are put at Christ's right hand to be blessed. Some are judged to be goats and are put at his left hand to be punished. And notice the standard by which the people are judged by how well or how poorly they treated the least of their neighbors. Both groups, both the sheep and the goats, are surprised. The sheep are surprised that by having shown compassion to the marginalized, they were showing compassion to Jesus. Likewise, the goats are surprised that by having ignored the needs of the marginalized, they were ignoring Jesus' needs. Christ the King is teaching them and us a very important lesson. This is where we will talk about two different terms, monarchs, monarch is a king, and viceroys, which is a word that comes from vice, which means to stand in place of, and roy, king, stand in place of the king. So back in the ancient days when kings ruled most of the earth, if they had too much land to govern by themselves, they would pick people to be their viceroys or their stand-ins and would send them out to govern in the local provinces and so forth 
as their representative. So the viceroy was a stand-in for the king. In today's scripture, we learn that all people, all people are viceroys for King Jesus, Christ Pantocrator. This is why when we treat others well or poorly, we are treating our king well or poorly. This is a quote from Bishop Desmond Tutu. He says, it's the horizontal dimension, meaning the relationships between people. It's the horizontal dimension that makes our faith so thoroughly subversive in a situation of oppression and injustice. It speaks of the infinite value of human persons. We count for God because he treated us lovingly. Each one of us is the object of the divine love as if we were the only person around. We are created in God's image and therefore each one of us is held to be a representative or a viceroy of God. So if we want to honor Christ the King out of gratitude for the love he has shown us by giving us eternal life, we have to treat all kinds of um, people as viceroys of God. This includes even the most despicable people we can think of. We have to remember that no matter how wicked they are, they are created in the image of God and are deserving at least of basic respect, even if we disagree with their actions. How many of you have seen the movie Dead Man Walking? Anybody? Okay, so some of you are familiar with it. This is the story of Sister Helen Prejean, who um, is a Catholic nun, and she put together the story for Dead Man Walking based on her experiences with two real-life convicted killers that were on death row. In the movie, we hear that Matthew Poncelet was a convict sentenced to death for the murder and rape of a teenage couple. He had been on death row at Louisiana State Penitentiary for six years. His accomplice, Carl Vitello, was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. As the scheduled execution date gets closer, Poncelet asks Sister Helen Crejean, with whom he has corresponded, to help him make his final appeal. Sister Helen decides to visit Poncelet, who is arrogant, sexist, and racist, and does not even pretend to feel remorse. He protests his innocent and insists that Vitello killed the two teenagers. Convincing an experienced attorney to take on Poncelet's case pro bono, Sister Helen tries to have his sentence commuted to life imprisonment. After many visits, she establishes a relationship with him. At the same time, she gets to know Poncelet's mother, Lucille, and the families of the two victims. The victims' families do not understand Sister Helen's efforts to help Poncelet and claim that she is taking his side. They desire absolute justice, i.e. his life for those of their children. Sister Helen's application for commutation is refused. Poncelet asked Sister Helen to be his spiritual advisor through his ex execution, and she agrees. She tells Poncelet that his redemption is possible only if he takes responsibility for what he did. Just before he is taken from his cell to be executed, he tearfully admits to Sister Helen that he had killed the boy and raped the girl before Vitello killed her. As he's prepared for execution, he appeals to the boy's father for forgiveness and tells the girl's parents that he hopes his death brings him peace. Poncelet is executed by lethal injection and given a proper burial. The murdered boy's father attends the funeral ceremony. Although he is still filled with hate, he soon begins to pray with Sister Helen. As part of her ministry, in real life, because the dead man walking was um, partially a work of fiction. In her ministry in real life, Sister Helen has approached both Pope John Paul II and Pope Francis, urging them to establish the Catholic Church's position 
is unequivocally opposed to capital punishment under any circumstances. After Sister Helen's urging under Pope John Paul II, the Catechism was revised to strengthen the Church's opposition to executions, although it allowed for a very few exceptions. Then, not long after meeting with Sister Helen in August of 2018, Pope Francis announced the new language of the Catholic Catechism, which declares that the death penalty is inadmissible because it is an attack on the inviability and dignity of the person with no exceptions. Sister Helen understands that all people, even the ones that do despicable things, are viceroys for Christ the King, our King Jesus. The way we treat our neighbors, especially the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the sick, and the prisoner, is the way we treat Jesus, and it's on that basis that we'll be judged by our King. Before today, is that every Roy, and we should treat them accordingly. That's why most weeks I conclude our benediction world to love all people well, because you are meeting Jesus himself through all these people who are his viceroys. Thanks be to God. Amen. the faith we sing on page 2070 page 2070 we'll sing this through twice please
Almighty God, we give you thanks for into our lives day by day. You, our tithes, and your offerings. And we ask that you would accept multiply them and use them wherever they'll do the most good for you to establish the kingdom of heaven. And we pray. Amen. Amen. We will sing in English and not in Spanish. Um, so hopefully that will help you feel a little better about it. It's a song that reminds us that all people are vice 434 in your United Methodist hymnal. Thank you. 